get set because it's time to go with the it's 420 somewhere podcast with your host with the most the man voted most likely to smoke out with a yeti mr brian brown mr brian brown now sit back and relax because it's time to go live across the world because it's 420 somewhere What's up, guys? It's Brian, and we are coming back to you from live from the back rooms, guys. I fell in a portal, and now I'm in the back rooms coming to you for the It's 420 Somewhere podcast. That's right, guys. I'm your host, Brian. Brian, welcome, welcome, one, welcome all. Welcome to the back room brawl, guys. Um, I've fallen into the back rooms because today is paranormal tuesday guys that is right where we talk all things conspiracy all things paranormal all things crazy guys i'm really looking forward to this one we got a great one we got an interview we got ufo talk we got whistleblower talk guys we got a whole mess of stuff to get into and i'm excited to get into it hey but hey real quick guys if you like this video you love this content i'm talking to you lonnie i'm talking to you chantel i'm talking to you Teresa deller everyone out there jeremy all the ballers club all the old school all the dank world order people you guys know what i'm talking about if you're enjoying this content hit that like button for me guys and make sure you're leaving a comment on the regular comments guys i love the live chat but it just kind of helps the algorithm if you just put a hey what's up brian or hey good show or just put hey and that will work too guys i appreciate you and how do i reward you guys for doing such tasking work for me i give you giveaways that's right guys we got a good one we got we're just giving them randomly away on the morning show if you haven't checked it out check out the 7 10 a.m morning show it's wacky it's wild we get crazy on there guys um we get a lot of giveaways guys a lot of giveaways hashtag Fox. Wow. For Megan Fox. Who wants to win a Megan Fox giveaway? This week, guys, we're blowing out summer with a Megan Fox autograph. Hashtag Fox. It's like a $200 piece, guys. Did you get in on that? Hashtag Halloween for the Lori Strode Realty sign. Signed by Douglas Tate. And I'm getting some others on there, guys. So get in for that one. Hashtag 420. We're just giving away random Funko Pops, guys. So check that out as well. And then what else we got? Uh, monsters. Hashtag monsters, guys. And I got on Friday, we're going to announce two new giveaways. Two big giveaways. A little Rick and Morty action. Maybe. Maybe a little autograph. We got a BAM box. We got stuff rolling in, guys. We got a lot of giveaways. Hashtag the Daily Dank. You never know when we're going to do Prize Patrol and surprise you guys. All right. So today is Paranormal Tuesday. I'm excited. Like I said, we have a really great interview with um, uh, my buddy, Benny uh, Mur Mudra. Mudra probably saying that wrong. Um, great guy. Um, he is a spiritual wellness coach. He's a, does so, man, he has a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to get into it. He, uh, does readings. He does, you guys need to just check it out. We're going to talk psychic. We're going to talk, we're going to talk a whole bunch of spiritual wellness, how to get you on track. But what else we're going to talk about guys is some of this UFO stuff. We're going to get into that right now before we do our little, uh, 420 break. Um, yeah, what do you guys know about this, man? Um, so they've been having a whole mess of hearings, um, going on about, there was a whistleblower and the whistleblower came out and said the government has known about UFOs and actually has some from the thirties even, or the forties, I believe, way before Roswell. And, uh, yeah, it basically came out and a lot of people corroborated his story and man, now we're having hearings. And a lot, it's funny because a lot of these UFO guys are going crazy, like they're justified now. Oh, I knew it the whole time. But yeah, man, there's a lot, a lot to get into. Um, so let's kind of get into the overall, uh, I guess the, the, the overall summary of it all, guys. David Gersh, 
who served 14 years as an intelligent officer in the Air Force and National uh, Geo Spatrial in 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 Intelligent. Oh, easy for me to say. Intelligence Agency appeared before the House Oversight Committee, um, National Se Security and Sub. Uh, and subcommittee alongside two former fighter pilots who had firsthand experience with UAPs. So that's what we're calling uh, UFOs now, UAPs, Unidentified Aerial something or other. Um, yeah, so uh, he served as representative on two Pentagon task force investigating the UAPs until earlier this year. He told lawmakers that he was informed of a multi-decade UAP crash Retrieval and Reversal Engineering Program. Bob Lazar, guys. This is what Bob Lazar has been talking about for many, many years. They ruined his life. They took away his credentials, took away his identity. It is some retribution for Bob Lazar. But wait till we get into the nuts and bolts about, about them basically admitting that people have been killed for knowing too much. Yeah, there's a lot to get into. If the government would do that over UFOs, imagine what else they would have done. I'm just saying, guys. So, uh, let's say during the course of his work examining classified programs, he said he was denied access to those programs when requested it. Um, he accused the military of misappropriating funds to shield these operations from congressional oversight. He later said that he had interviewed officials who had direct knowledge of the aircraft with non-human origins and the so-called biologies were recovered from some craft. So he's saying flat out, we have, um, we have reversed engineered it, um, you know, and it's going on. Uh, members of both parties questioned how Congress should go about investigating the remarkable allegations, a reflection of the increasing willingness by lawmakers. Yeah, you know, I mean, if I'm a congressman, and I think I'm all that in a can of beans. You guys know how these congressmen are. They, they, they're control freaks. They don't want anything to be said without them knowing, whatever. So then you find out there's a whole government agency that you don't have no control over. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't need you as a congressman. They got their own money. Um, yeah, they get a little, they're going to start looking into it. I guarantee you. These uh, ego-driven congressmen, and women, they're going to start looking into it. They want answers. They think they're the end-all, be-all. And uh, they're, they're not going to like that uh, this is going on without their, um, you know, without their authority. Um, the UAP issues uh, has gained widespread attention from Congress and the public in recent years with the release of videos. Like I said, even the Navy guys are on the ship and you see all these UFOs. It's starting to be undeniable. Like, really, I think that's why you're seeing these Congress hearings. Um, so, uh, the Tic Tac video, we've talked about the Tic Tac video where, um, fighter pilots went off to do exercises and they had been seeing on radar some really weird anomalies every so often around a certain time. So they send the fighter pilots without any information to go check it out. And what he describes is a, uh, about the size of a 747 jet, but inverted. No, ex uh, no uh, combustible engine, no exhaust at all. Um, and it was able to like gyroscope, 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 whatever it is, um, over. So like, you know, normally a plane could move like that. You know what I mean? Or this could move like all on all axes, I guess is the proper terminology. Um, and he said it looked like a giant Tic Tac. And what really fascinates me about this one is it went underwater. It disappears underwater, which sets off all sorts of red flags for me. I'm like, man, we don't know what's under there already, and these things are disappearing in the water. Um, yeah, just a lot of crazy stuff, guys. Um, so Congress is pushing for more UFO, uh, UAP transparency. Um, they really want to look into it again. Uh, man, it's going to be undeniable. There's going to be pretty soon a moment or we can't even, can't even deny it, guys. What do you think? What do you think about all this? Blow up those comments. Let me know what you think, Nova Mike. 
What do you think of these UAPs? All right, guys, we are getting into 420. Got about a minute left, guys. What I'm getting into today in the back rooms. I can hear, I'm scrounging. I'm just trying to find what I can find down here, guys. Lost in the back rooms doing a 420 show. Can I see that? I think there's a monster in here, guys. All right, I'm getting into, I need some, I'm getting into some awesome dope, super awesome dope, guys. This is a top shelf, uh, they got them on a BOGO right now over at the Healing Center. Oh man, the Frosted Flakes is fire, guys. Coming in about 35%. This is a top shelf flower. You get big, dense nugs that just really fill up your bowl. I like it a lot. A little spend, a little spendy, a little spendy. You're looking at about 45 uh, bucks or so i think 60 but you get two of them so you're really only spending 30 and of course i crumble that stuff up guys that's right all right what i want you to do right now is blow up those comments blow up those comments guys who's got that rig who's got that dab pipe who's got that bong who's got that wax who's got that flaming hot cheeto you're just eating it who's got that baja blast blah, 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 blah. i got the baja blast guys whatever you're doing Inhale the positivity, exhale the negativity, guys, and get into it because it is 420. <laughs> guys we are back and we got a special one today guys you know we talk a lot on the show about uh you know we talk a lot about personal baggage or however you want to call it um you know carrying stuff and how we just need to let things go at times and how uh can really be a burden what did uh what did i compare it to one time i have so much baggage it was like hurricane katrina around me you know <laughs> everything all over the place but uh you know we've talked about working it through and how uh uh, relieving that could be and uh, just kind of uh, releasing that stuff so we could be ourselves more so than that and I think uh, this gentleman kind of embodies that um, the titles I have the list here the titles that this gentleman holds um, I'm just going to say he is uh, I'm going to use the term um, he probably wouldn't use this but I'm going to say he's a mind well mind body wellness guru and aficionado I mean the 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 the, the titles just stack up, guys. We'd be here all day if I threw them in there. But, guys, please give it up for James. It's Bean, right? Uh, Bene. Bene. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Bene. sorry. That's Bene. okay. It's, it's Italian. Oh, <laughs> like fragile, right? No, exactly. I'm sure you hear that exactly. joke all the time. I'm sorry. Of course. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, I've been looking forward to this for sure. Yeah, yeah, we have too. Uh, I, but as soon as we booked you, I was like, oh man, this uh, has got to be great. You know, we, we do talk a lot about like holding on to stuff and I call it like the baggage, um, different mm -hmm. things, whether it be hurt from the past, different things people mm -hmm. can say to you, whatever. Um, and you just kind of hold on to that. And I see uh, you're, you're, you kind of focus a lot on like uh, self-healing and releasing um, and then mm -hmm. kind of clearing your uh, chi if you will, um, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What kind of got you into in, into this um, this uh, profession, um, uh, the lifestyle, if you will? Yeah. yeah, I know. It's like, I don't even know what it is. Is it a profession? Is it a lifestyle? Um, I'd have to say that, honestly, ever since I was really little, 
Um, I've had, let's just for lack of better words, I had uh, paranormal or supernatural activity happening around me, uh, I guess. Um, and it was pretty freaky at that age. But um, ever since I remember, I kind of had spiritual energy around me. And as I grew older and started to understand what it was, I kind of had no choice but to face it and, and deal with it uh, because it was something that was just kind of happening and not fun. You know, you really are not in control of these types of situations in your life. And so, you know, throughout my childhood, this would happen. I would try to turn on and off, but I think that intuitively as a kid, I would try to meditate a lot. I didn't know that I was doing that, but I would to kind of help myself where I would try to get my body into these like divine states of relaxation just because I was afraid or had a lot of fear. Um, and that kind of, I guess, kept my channels open. Like, I, I guess I was training myself <laughs> since I was a kid and, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was always fascinated and interested in spirituality, in, I guess, self-help, in, in the mind, because I was just kind of was forced to because I was having these type of phenom phenomenons occurring. Um, and then really in, in my early to, early to mid twenties, I would say is when a lot of the same things that, were, that happened to me as a kid started happening again as an adult. Oh. Um, um, not, and, not to interrupt you. I, I just had a yeah. couple questions before we uh, switch from a uh, kid sure, sure, to, sure. Uh, to a young adult. Yeah. Um, so uh uh, a lot of times, like I've heard uh, people who have um, the gifts and like, you know, that kind of thing say like once, um, I guess the spirits or whatever kind of realize that you can like connect to them a little bit, that it almost is overwhelming that because they're, you know, like it, they're so not desperate per se. Well, yeah, desperate, I guess is the right word to communicate. How is that as a kid? Did you ex kind of experience that? Um, was it, I mean, I had to be like, especially like you said, there was no one there coaching you. You probably had to like, just figure it out as you went along. Yeah. I mean, I was, I think, five, five, oh, earliest, wow. earliest memory, maybe four or five. So um, I didn't know what the hell was happening, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, what was happening, there was this communication trying to be made. Um, and I was even kind of seeing spirit. Um, so yeah, it was pretty funky. And it, it was very overwhelming. Absolutely. Especially as a kid. Um, yeah. And even as an adult, it's it's overwhelming. But I think it's even more as a child, because it's kind of like all of your nightmares come to, come to life. <laughs> oh, kid, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, it's like being scared of the dark. It's like an, un, that's underrated. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I slept with the light on for most of my childhood. Um, so, you know, I, I went through that and that's, to me, that's trauma. Like you're talking about like holding on to stuff and trying to release that just that those experiences were so traumatic to me that they really, I had to do a lot of work then as I got older, um, to really help me understand these gifts, not feel too overwhelmed and to kind of release a lot of that childhood stuff that, that happened so that I could experience what is happening to me as a gift and not a curse, you know? Yeah. Um, and I had to kind of let go a lot of that fear. And as I did that and I started to study and kind of throw myself into it, um, it started to get less overwhelming and it really became something that was manageable and then ultimately something that I could help people, you know, with like, what was that, that moment? Help yeah. What was that moment? Like where you're like, okay, like enough. So not like, this is either going to be a curse or a blessing and I need to figure mm -hmm. this out. What was that moment like for you? Um, that moment was, um, like, it, it was a choice. It wasn't my top choice. I mean, I was in performing arts school. I was an actor. I have a songwriter. You know, I had a, I had a, a, a lot of goals that I wanted to, to do, you know, other than spirituality. This was just something that happened to me, not something that I wanted to do. Yeah. But when it became uh, overwhelming, I had to kind of put things on hold and say, you know what? I have to make this decision right now to work on myself um, and to figure this out. And if I am meant to use it to help people, if I am meant to put this into the world in any way, I kind of surrender to it. I was like, all right, you know, I'm not going to fight it. If this is what God or spear or whatever has for me, then I'm going to have to kind of shut up and kind of go with it. 
you know? Um, and so I think it was that, that, that choice. I think I was around 23 or 24 at that time. Wow. That's yeah. And then, yeah. so then you were just all in at that point. Like you said, you, you started doing uh, studying and researching and kind of, mm -hmm. um, did you, uh, did you reach out to anyone? Did you have like any mentors kind of, I mean, or was it just all self-study run to the library, like in the movies and yeah, the Dewey decimal <laughs> system? <you're> all... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I would say there was some of that. There definitely was some of that. Um, but no, I did, I did find a mentor actually. Um, uh, who at the time I was living in New York and she, she was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan and her name was Kelly Piper. And she kind of came to me through a person, through a person, through a person. So it was very like synchronistic. I wasn't really looking, but I guess it just found me. And I just started to see her and it kind of was like, you know, she was like, you're one of us. You have the gift. It was like a witch movie. You know what I mean? Like on your 15th <laughs> birthday, you received the power. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't, I, I, what, what power do I have? Please show me. Um, but no, th through working with her steadily then, because we really connected, um, she kind of showed me that I was meant to kind of use this for myself, but really for others as well, because that's what she did. You know, she did yeah. just that. And so um, I worked with her for years and unfortunately she died of brain cancer, but um oh, I really do feel that if I hadn't met her and really worked with her on, on just clearing away energy, understanding what's going on. Um, I had a lot of depression. I had a lot of anxiety. So I had a lot going on. I also experienced trauma as, as a child. So there was kind of a lot that we had to work through to kind of get me to a place where I can just uncover these gifts and, and be comfortable with them, you know, and not yeah. be scared of them. And, and like with any, any goals or aspirations someone someone has, especially if they're lofty, like you were saying, you usually go into it with baggage and then realize shit. Oops, sorry. I, no, no, you're <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Like, like, <laughs> you just realize like I can't achieve this unless I really do some serious letting go and 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 work on myself. So it was like a mixture of like therapy, self study, seances. I mean, it was crazy. Um, learning about energy, learning about mediumship, learning about like the universal law, um, all of it. You know, I kind of just delved into to everything head first, studying the occult, Buddhism, even Christianity, just kind of really, I wanted to learn everything, I guess. Yeah, you know. yeah. Oh, definitely. And, you know, uh, you, you kind of uh, touched on a couple of things like uh, I like to say, like our fears are really based off of uh, the unknown things that we just don't understand. And you, know, you said like uh, at that point where you're like, I can either fear this or I can understand it. And you open the books and you started. Uh, and I, I think a lot of that, uh, like you were saying, too, um, like it, it really uh, it, it speaks to a lot of us because, you know, it's just it's just basically overcoming uh opening our minds and being like okay what is this what can i instead of trying to shy away from it so i, I like i really mm -hmm. like the way you phrased that that and then also uh Thanks. what you were saying about like uh, the baggage or whatever you're holding on to how you kind of had to clear that out for your true self for your true um mm -hmm. you know uh um, tools to shine if you will and then that's very true like yeah. you said like you kind of you gotta got to shake the dust off you know and you know for yeah. that to, yeah and get that going um yeah so definitely respect on both of those that, that's 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 really awesome a lot to overcome too and uh i just could picture uh when you were telling the story i pictured uh luke and yoda in the Dagobah swamp <laughs> and you guys doing seances and uh, doing the whole thing and just clearing, clearing out the thing. And you're like, no, I got to go master. <laughs> you know what? There were moments where I was even like, what am I doing? I, I mean, I, I, you know, it was kind of uh, not that I was skeptical before this, but some of the stuff I was like, okay, this is really even out there for me. Um and now look at me, I'm pretty out there. So, you know, I, I think that um, when you have someone that can kind of see the path you are headed on or can kind of understand where you will, will be going based on their own experiences, I think she kind of knew. And so even though she introduced me to some concepts and things that I thought like, wow, this woman's wackadoo, um, it made complete sense because uh, hello yeah. you know what i mean like she's yeah. right like okay I, I needed to know this and so 
even though we did some weird things and you know tampered with spirit in different ways um i'm glad that that i had that kind of guru or that that mentor in place yeah. Yeah. And by doing those things, I would assume that you gain a lot of experiences, whether you use it every day or whether, you know, but the experience and the knowledge probably goes a long way as with like kind of pushing boundaries, like you said, or doing things that you normally probably wouldn't have uh, tested. Yeah, I, definitely. I mean, some of the things I've learned, I still use, you know, even if it's not on myself necessarily with the people that I help, um, a lot of people who have these types of experiences or these gifts or, or experiencing spirit in this way um i've mentored you know i've helped and so i find that a lot that i've learned even if i've moved past things you know i'm able to then say okay this this helped me a lot even though it sounds crazy like let's let's try this you know yeah. um and a lot of people they find relief you know um and they're able to kind of get to where i got right just i'm like you know what don't be afraid of it just kind of move just walk into the dark you know walk into this unknown place knowing that you're safe you know yeah um so uh where uh so i i see that you're all over your brand your website is i love the website by the way I, if you guys you guys need oh, to check you. it out the description is going to be uh there uh it, the, the link is in the description below uh <laughs> that's a mouthful to say um so guys make sure you're checking it out i love it it's clean um the photos on there are great and it's really uh Thank super you. simple to navigate um it tells you what it is you don't have to guess yeah and i i looked at it both on my phone and my computer and uh it flows really well um uh, so uh, i'm loving the side i'm loving what you're doing um kind of explain about uh, like you know uh what, what you're doing now uh, as far as uh, offering uh, uh i see your mentor you got a bunch of different things going mm -hmm. on on there kind of explain that to us if you if you don't mind yeah so um uh, i guess since then and now i've kind of in a lot you know, in the world of spirituality and wellness, other than just mediumship and the spiritual stuff. So I, I'm also a life coach. I think that that's an important aspect, aspect for people to um, incorporate into their lives, especially if they don't know how to let things go. If they're just, they need spiritual guidance on real world issues. You know, they don't all have to be like, you know, witches, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? They could just be going through stuff. So I really enjoy helping people move past trauma, move past depression and anxiety, because I've done all of that and I've experienced all of that. Um, so I do offer that, but I, I also offer just psychic mediumship sessions where I actually channel spirit, kind of give people these readings, but I do it in definitely more therapeutic way than like, you know, some boardwalk psychic or a yeah, psychic that's the that vibe works. I got on the site was definitely, you know, it reminded me of like a, a retreat or like a spa. Like it was mm -hmm. like a mental getaway just on the 10 minutes I was on there. It was, it, it's really relaxing. Like if, if that's a Thank thing, you. that website's relaxing. Yeah, it, it, it really was. Like I said, it felt like I went into a spa for like the 10 minutes I was on there and I was looking at all the offerings and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys check it out. It's definitely a, a really good site. Um, so uh, I kind of want to add a question uh, for you um, yeah. about um, like the releasing of things. Like you said, um, I've been a, uh, uh, and this is just general broad. I'm not going to be like, mm -hmm. now pick a card and tell me what the card is. Nothing like that. Uh, um, I've been, uh, I, I've dealt with like anger issues, I guess, patience, uh, different, uh, I guess would be inpatient <laughs> issues um, uh, most of my life. And I've been working the last few years on really trying to let uh, things go. I've been working with a therapist, uh, meditating, mm -hmm. doing all, all the things. Um, but it almost seems like sometimes I'll like, uh, I'll let go of the thing that I was most holding on to but then latch on to something else you know what i almost mm -hmm. like uh mm -hmm. um what would be uh like what would what kind of exercises what kind of thing would you suggest for someone who you know got to go in through those issues i think that when you're going through stuff where your mind is kind of wanting to grasp onto anything so you kind of let go of something and then you're grasping onto something else it's like remember we all experience addiction in many different ways and some of us are addicted to our thoughts or just behaviors and so if you let go of one it's like the addiction is still there so you're going to grasp onto something else and then just kind of use that to escape right and and i think that the biggest thing is to not do those things and to stop yourself 
instead of grasping onto these other things or finding that you're trying to control anything in your life, um, just sit with the emotion. You know, behind that that impulse to want to control or to want to stop yourself or to want to be impatient, there's something else. And I've learned that it is so important to find what that something else is. Is it sadness? Is it depression? It, what's there? You know, and the way to do it is just to kind of stop, which is the best word in spirituality. It's stop, take a breath and sit with your emotions. Just sit with yourself. And trust me, it'll start to come up. You know, yeah. your body is... Your body keeps the score. It doesn't forget anything. It knows everything. Everything that you've ever experienced is there. And so your body will show you through emotion. And it's those emotions that people want to escape from because it could be too difficult to kind of handle. But, you know, it's just a feeling. And I say a feeling is just a feeling. It can't do anything. You can't, yeah. you know, and you just feel it. And so I think just feel what's underneath the urge to do. Right. Yeah. And, and it's kind of become the archaeologist of your life. Yeah. I've uh, deemed this year uh, the year of uh, radical acceptance, which for me is a very hard thing. And uh, already this year, there's been a couple of times where I just had to take a step back and be like, OK, this is happening. Mm -hmm. What can we do to move on from here? Where before it took me like a week or two, I'd just butt up against that wall and be like, no, no. Mm -hmm. And then once you accept it, which, you know, is, is a huge, is huge mentally, like uh, this acceptance. I think all of us fall in that trap of, you know, how could this be? Uh, so I've met some people who have that, who do not have that issue and God bless them. But you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's good to know that, you know, everything happens for you. Yeah. Not to you. Yeah. And so even if something sucks, <laughs> there might be a real divine reason why it sucks and it has to suck in that moment. And so just let yeah. it suck. Don't judge it. You know, sometimes the, I think not sometimes, a lot of times the most amazing things in your life can happen out of tragedy or out of yeah. discomfort, you know? And so I think that cool, feel the discomfort and know that there could be something really great right around the corner because of it, you know, good things don't always come in good packages. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Oh, no, you know. no, definitely. Actually, you know, like the best things that's ever happened to me were like, you know, you have one plan and then things go awry. And then, you know, at the end of the road, whatever road you end up having to take, you look back and you're like, oh, that could have been so much worse. Or that could have been, mm -hmm. you know, like it always, everything always works out. It's just in the moment. Sometimes it's really hard to remember that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It always works out usually. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, I have uh, two kids. Uh, they actually just turned 18 and 21. Uh, so like, you know, it's the whole leaving the nest. We got that. Uh, and I remember uh, like I, I want to sit down with my son who's 21 and uh, like be like, I know that because of experience, you're like you're not going to like this ain't going to sink in, but if it's going to, please just let it sink in. But you know, it's all yeah. based on experience in life. No matter how many yeah. times someone can tell us something, we're not going to listen. We're going to take yeah. the the road we're going to take. And, you know, and mm -hmm. it's hard to witness that sometimes, but you just got to know it's all going to work out in the end. Yeah. We're all on our own journeys, you know, and as a parent, I'm sure it's really difficult to see your kids either making a wrong decision or going down a path that you know isn't going to work out for them because you've experienced something like that but they'll never learn unless they experience that failure you know i think success is standing back up i've fallen so many times you know and yeah. i think that why i think i'm successful is because i keep getting up i might be crazy but i just keep getting back up and saying okay uh, here we go again you know um, i can take the punch yeah you know what else do you got yeah and really, what else can you do? I mean, like we talk a lot about this. Uh, we're very, very uh, uh, suicide prevention and all that on, on the channel. We talk a lot about that. And I always say, man, we only got one life. I mean, what else can you do? You got to get up, dust yourself off and uh, continue down the road and got to, what is it? The rainbow after the storm, so to speak. You got to, sometimes yep. that storm can last a long time, but you got to know that sometimes rainbow's again. coming. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sometimes definitely. it can, but you know what? I think that um, people like me exist and, and spirituality and meditation, mindfulness really are just tools to help you navigate that storm in, in the most graceful way you can, you know? So there's always a storm, but can you be the Zen inside of that, that yeah. tornado?
Yeah. Or, or uh, the the lotus, uh, the lotus in the mud, right? Like a lotus only grows, yeah. the lotus flower only grows in the mud type of. Yeah, I love metaphors like yep. that. That's very awesome. Yeah. Um, so I got to ask you about uh, your connection with uh, with spirit. How how does that, how is that like? Is it just like an overwhelming feeling? Is it like almost a conversation? Is it almost like, like a connection where you're like you know sharing thoughts type of thing? Um. It, 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 I think a lot of people will experience it differently. So the way I experience it a lot is clairaudience. So I can sometimes hear um, and claircognizance, which is just a knowing or a thought. Um, it's like having a thought that you know is not your own. It's like this, I'm not coming up with this. This is not me. It's something that's infiltrating. Um, and there's an energy around it. And that energy is a little bit like uh, a little anxious. It feels like kind of like an anxious energy. I don't know how else to describe it, but um, when I feel that, then I know, oh, okay, like this is yeah. this is happening or this is here. And then if I work with someone in that way, that's I'll start to feel that. And for me, it's like um, I learned to kind of turn it on and off to say, okay, like I'm doing spiritual work or I'm working on it. I'm going to turn it on. So I meditate. I call upon the higher powers that be like my guides, my angels, these energies that I work with for protection. So I make sure that I'm connected in that way. I make sure that I'm clear. You know, I clear my space. I clear myself. Um, I use a lot of Reiki, things like that to just make sure that um, I feel clear, you know, kind of empty the cup out, make sure that I get out of my own ego um, because this is like a super mind. So I can't be in my head. I have to really get out of my head in order to do it. So there are steps for sure, but the feeling once you're there, it just feels like a very much like an intuitive knowing. Like I know this to be true and I'm lucky in that way. I don't go into my emotions really so much. It's just kind of this like, yeah, I know, I know this is happening or I know what's going on in your life or I know this is coming from this source or they give me their name. And I'm like, look, you're, this is sounds like your grandmother, you know, or, you know, sometimes it's super clear and super, um, precise and other times it's like putting a puzzle together you know yeah Um, so it could be both you know um for myself however uh not so lucky like um i will have experiences by myself but really when it really comes to life is when i'm with other people you know working with other people um i i'm not too psychic for myself it's a lot harder so i'm in the same boat as many people when it comes to following their own intuition you know i have to really always remember to do that as well yeah yeah a lot of uh the, the gifted people we've talked to pretty much say that too i wonder is that like a, a safeguard be like you know you can, you know other people what's going on but we'll keep yours a mystery for you you know type of, type of hey yeah, you know, <laughs> the heaven the heavens are mysterious you know we we don't know it's mysterious i mean i get a little bit but not much it's like a, i'm like great well I can't use this for me, but I can help other people with it. I guess it's like anything else. A dentist really can't give himself a root canal. Yeah. Really. Maybe he understands how, but yeah, I understand how, but I can't really do it for myself. So that's why a lot of people like me or, you know, we, we will get together and help each other out, you know? Yeah. Um, so you make, you make friends who are like you. So you have a support system, I guess is the way to do it. Yeah, um, I could imagine that it would probably be. Uh, so uh, I've talked about it. my uh, girlfriend works uh, mental health. And when uh, she gets home, mm-hmm. usually she has a lot, uh, not specifics or anything, but she vents a lot like, oh, you know, because I think it's a lot to take on. You know, you're you're listening to other people's stuff all day and you just kind of got to shake mm-hmm. off whatever. And um, I could imagine it would be the same, uh, even more so probably magnified because like you're getting in there, you know, even more. uh, uh it, does it help to like be with people who understand it like you know on your level and you can kind of vent it out and you know kind of shake it off if you will yeah it's it's really important it's i think it's really important to have it's like it's like you know any therapists need therapists you know what i mean it, yeah. because they, they need someone to talk to like, they can't just do it for the people and not give to themselves so i think uh, one of the spiritual laws really is the law of sustenance and you need to you need nourishment and so if you're giving you got to receive it's just the yin and the yang kind of a thing you know so yeah we, it, it's really important for anyone in the mental health industry and uh, maybe i'd lump myself in there as well the spiritual yeah, okay. to help people with mental health yeah. um 
to also not be too proud to go get help and to be able to vent things out and to, you know, um, get therapy. So I think that it's important to have a community for sure. And I know a lot of people that don't, and when they realize that there is a community of people that are like them, um, it's super helpful. It's super, super helpful because a lot of people don't have community and then they do hold it all in and yeah. they start to feel bad, you know, across the board. Yeah, you know? start really carrying that weight. Like we talked about, like once you start bottling it in, oh, it didn't really, yeah. uh, it's more like a pressure. Like I compare it to a soda bottle. You shake the soda, soda bottle up and uh, the carbonation gets mm-hmm. all tight. Um, so let's say uh, um, someone who uh, hasn't really uh, touched in the spirituality or at the things that you've, uh, you, you kind of teach and you kind of welcome. And they're, they're mm-hmm. looking to kind of get into that. And they're kind of tipping their toe. Where would you suggest they start uh, and kind of, you know, work from there? Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's a lot of amazing books that are available. Um, I read a bunch of books. I think one of the most amazing books was a couple, but one that I really love is called You Could Heal Your Life. And that's by Louise Hay. And it's more about mindset and about like releasing trauma. But I think anyone who wants to step into the spiritual world, they need to first understand the material world. They need to understand their bodies. They need to understand trauma. They need to understand energy. Um, And so the first thing I would say is heal, like do whatever you need to do to really work on your own stuff. Um, And the spirituality that comes and will only get stronger when you get stronger and you start to clear away your ego, you start to work with yourself instead of against yourself. I think meditation, people are scared of it. To me, it was just the most important thing to connect yeah. and to kind of go inward. I would say like insight timer is a great app um, that I use to this day. You just find a good meditation and, and you can meditate for five, 10 minutes a day or whatever you can do. And I think that start there and then just kind of read. There's so many amazing authors. There's hayhouse.com is an amazing tool. They have a lot of spiritual authors and, and workshops and online stuff. My website offers a lot of that as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that if someone is, thinks that they have like psychic abilities or they think that that's for them, you know, there's a lot of intuitive development classes that you can take now that probably weren't available back then. I even teach some. So there's a lot more now than I think there ever was because spirituality became like trendy. Yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) and so they could just go on, honestly, they could just go on Instagram. I mean, now or TikTok and there's a million people that are saying some good stuff. Some people are crazy, but some people are really offering some great things. So I would just start there. Everyone has a phone. Everyone can go on Instagram or TikTok or anything or something like that and just start looking people up and hearing what they have to say. You know, I think that's a nice way to kind of get your feet wet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that's something that I kind of wanted to touch on too. I'm glad that you brought it up. So you've been doing this uh, like obviously a long time, been in the, the scene, so to speak. Uh, if I can phrase it that way, how uh, the the times are changing. Like you said, how uh, yeah. how awesome is it to see like how accepting? Because I mean, what was it? Just twenty years ago, per se, it was you know all those hippies or whatever you know whatever people would say. And now, I mean, it's way more accepted. Um, I mean, you know, people are open to that. I think a lot more people are open to the idea that this exists and there's a different plane. Um, how is that? How is how is cool was that to see? And how did that affect you? Was it a you know like okay now we can push forward a little more? Um, yeah, I think that um, I think it's awesome that this is becoming something that's still not mainstream, but it's definitely going there. I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so it's pretty mainstream here, I can tell you, but, you know, not everywhere is it. Um, And in New York, it was too. I think that how it, when I started, I was like one of not many, let's say people doing what I was doing, you know, Um, now forget it. There's so many. I'm like, wow, it's like saturated. So a lot of people started to do it. A lot of people started to realize they had these gifts by seeing other people, And so it became like a domino effect. I think that a lot of people started to wake up. It was like an awakening, you know? And so to see this awakening happen and more people step into their power, maybe it's not a spiritual path, but whatever path it is, you know, the great resignation, people saying, screw this. I want a better quality of life. Well, that's a spiritual concept. People are starting to understand, wait a minute, my soul needs 
to, to, to feel something more than the restriction that is placed on us in today's society. So I think, you know, as people are, the great thing that's happening is people, whether they know it or not, are like slowly breaking out of the matrix, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and it's a slow boat, but it's happening. And so it's, it's happening to the entire planet, you know? Yeah, no, it definitely is. Do you, uh, with like the, the, like you said, so many people getting in touch with their, uh, their inner powers, uh, does that like strengthen? Do you think like the overall energy, like, I mean, is it like a more of a positive energy flowing out there with so many people, uh, tapping into it? Like, does that, does that strengthen the connection? I mean, that might be a dumb question, but <laughs> no, it's not a dumb question at all. I mean, the collective consciousness is absolutely a thing. And right now the collective conscious is, is pretty bruised and wounded. So the more people that can wake up and yeah, start putting this, I guess, if you want lack of a better word, better vibe into the universe. Yeah. It actually yeah. can shift things. It actually, actually will have an impact. You know, they say that if every single person thinks a positive thought at the same time, that the world would explode into something new, you yeah. know, and that's how strong our minds are. So yeah, our minds are pretty damn powerful. I, I, I believe. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, I've, uh, we talked a lot about, uh, what is it? The, not the rule of thirds that's filmmaking. Um, what is it like the secret, uh, the, um, uh, law of attraction. We, uh, we've talked uh -huh. about that a lot and how just being positive and putting out those positive vibes. It's like, you know, start uh, feeding back to you. Um, we, we've mm -hmm. talked a lot about that and, uh, definitely positivity over negativity. I think just in general, no matter what you believe in life, I think that's just a general good rule to have, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of false positivity. You know, if you're sometimes you're having a bad day, you need to feel a certain way. Feel it. Don't yeah. force yourself to, you know, be yeah. creepy happy because that's creepy <laughs> when someone's like that. Um, yeah. You know, but um, I think validate your feelings. But yeah, if you can find the brighter side of things, if you can change your perspective and work on your mindset. Um, and in a healthy way, your mind will just start to automatically kind of keep you in a more positive, healthy space. You know, it will. You won't be so negative or you won't have to be so negative or go to the negativity constantly or anger or whatever it is. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so uh, kind of uh, running out of time here, so we'll kind of wrap mm -hmm. it up real quick. What would you uh, like an overall message for all of us? Uh, like, you know, and not like uh, you, Grandpa Joe, you're going to get a million dollars in three weeks. Yeah, no, but like an overall because we, we thought about uh, like, a, I guess it would be a, like a healing message, some kind of like a, a message sure. for us. If, if you don't mind, as uh, an ending, uh, you know, kind of a, a of positive course. affirmation, if you don't mind. Of course, um, spirit always says, be kind to each other. Really? It, that's it, that's it's my, that's my saying. That's what I, I end up. That's yeah. what I end every show with. Hey, be kind to one. Oh, another. really? That's, yeah. Every show. That's how I end it. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Then you got it. That's it. So it's, yeah. it's, it could be as simple as that. Just be kind and you will be rewarded and, and you, you're on the right path. You know, everything else is choice, but there's, Kindness is also a choice, unfortunately, where we are. So if you can choose that and say every day I wake up just for today, wake up, I'm kind to myself, I'm kind to others, I go for the joy. If you could just go for the joy every day in your own life, you will automatically see the joy in others and spread that joy because joyful people are kind <laughs> yeah it's contagious you know I mean? yeah it's definitely contagious <laughs> yeah. too yeah it's a lot more contagious than a sneeze so let's spread that kindness out there guys exactly. for sure for sure well yeah, thank you please, so much please. and hey guys let's make sure we're checking out his site the links uh down there like i said uh down in the description uh click on that bad boy it's a great site of uh, a million different services well not that many but there's it's a pretty uh, uh <laughs> there's like seven different services but uh you can there's mix bunch, and match yeah. Yeah, there is this really cool site, guys. Make sure you're hitting them up. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, you. uh, you're so awesome. And uh, hey, guys, yeah. let's be uh, good to one another out there and be kind to one another. And uh, we'll wrap this up and we'll be right back, guys. All right, let me hit this real quick. 
thank you for joining us on the It's 420 Somewhere podcast. Broadcasting worldwide and brought to you by thedailydank.com. Check out our merchandise and amazing content. And follow us on all our social media. Now, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here.